cancer was some sort of punishment. In her sickness, though, she's been able to rediscover and reconnect to the God whose love is not measured by the things of this world, who's not a God that we can figure out and figure out how to manipulate to get us to get certain good things and to avoid certain bad things, a God that can be controlled by what we do. She's reconnected to the God who is so much more than that. The problem is that we like to make these simple systems to explain an unexplainable God. How often have you either faced a tragedy or been with someone who has? To hear someone trying to find a comforting word, employing that line from the book's title, everything happens for a reason. It's comforting. It makes us feel better to think that while this situation may really stink right now, it's part of a bigger plan. It gives us an image of God that we can be a little bit more comfortable with. It gives us something that we can say to a hurting person to feel better about the pain that they're in. But little cliches like this can become an idol. They're like the calf Aaron made to make his people feel better. They're a poor substitute for the real thing. No, our God is not some heavenly script writer, but rather the God who came in the flesh to join us in our pain. He saw the suffering of humanity and God intervened, proclaiming and worshiping the idol of this cliche God tempts us to forget the great I am who is still with us today. When we worship and when we follow and when we cling to this fake image of God, this one-dimensional image of God, it becomes an idol, a false God that takes our attention away from the real God who is with us through the hurt, who suffered and died for our sake. This is how easy answers become an idol because they take us away from the true God. It's not that we shouldn't try to understand God, but we have to be so, so careful in rushing to define God, to make definitive statements that answer every question or every situation. As a commentary I read about this passage put it, in longing to know why, we jump to glib conclusions that offer us temporary respite from the inherent mystery of God. And thus we make God into our own image. You see, when we try to simplify such a complicated God, when we try to make an easy answer, the answer that we get so often is not God, but rather a reflection of who we are. We make God into our image. Aaron simplifying God to a visible object, into a calf. The simplification is what led him to making the calf. Trying to control the uncontrollable presence of God. This relatedly, or excuse me, relatively easy action of metalwork, although I would not try to do it, tried to show the people that God was with them. But in actuality, this easy answer, this solution that Aaron thought that he found to assure the people, was a lie. And it led the people astray, it led them into sin. His easy answer did so much more damage than good. What are the places where you have removed the mystery of who God is by simplifying God into your image? Maybe it's like I mentioned before, theologically, and how you describe suffering or pain in your life. Maybe it's in politics, simply lumping God into one side or the other, of our political debate, or even into one issue, one side of an issue. 
Or maybe it's even in how you look at church. Limiting who God is, limiting who you can imagine God to be by what, how you have experienced God in this place. God will always be bigger than any box you try to put him into. Anything that can fit into any human box is an idol. It's something made with our hands. The fact is, God can't be fully understood or contained. We even see this in the conclusion of this passage in this reading. I wonder how many of you can adequately explain to me how an all-knowing God can change his mind as he decides not to punish his people. That's something that doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of logical sense. There's mystery there. There's mystery that this is beyond our comprehension. Because that's who God is. He's bigger than the rules and the systems that we make and try to contain him with. I know this has been a weird sermon. I'm sorry for that. After all, how often does the preacher try to come in and describe the challenge of trying to go know God? We're supposed to give you easy answers. I wonder, does this notion of God not being defined, does it comfort you? Or does it make you kind of uneasy? Or maybe a little bit of both. Are you okay with the fact that we can't define God? Or would you prefer that God fit better into how we think and how we work? This is a question I've thought about a lot. And I have to say that there's something that I find deeply assuring, that God operates well above my level. If God was stuck at my level, that would be really, really scary. (laughs) I don't know about you, but I want the creator of the universe to just be a little bit above where I am. And we have to remember that because if we think that God is our level, that we can understand and explain everything that God does, we're just worshiping ourselves. I would be worried if I could narrate the ways of my creator. To me, while sometimes confusing, it's comforting to know that God is so much more beyond me. These hard questions are a sign to me of just how great our God is. The good news is that God is so much bigger than the cliches behind it, so much bigger than the easy answers that we so often try to hide behind. The beliefs that we have about God, the political beliefs that we fight for, even the institution of the church, all, at the end of the day, have the potential to become idols. Things that we have made in our own image to replace God. We have to remember who it is we actually are worshiping. Who God actually is. And that He is the source of our comfort. He is what we are worshiping. Who we are worshiping. And that we cannot find ultimate comfort and guidance in these things of the world these systems that we've made. Because when we do, that's when they become idols. They become something made by our hands that take the place of God. So I hope that as you examine your life, as you look for those places where you have replaced the mystery of God with an easy answer or concrete system, we might all work to pray and to ask that God would set us free from our idols.